Hey everyone, Jessica Cabasi here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to use the liquify tool in Photoshop. Now the first thing that I do when I use the liquify tool is create a duplicate of the background. And the reason why I do this is because if anything goes wrong, I can simply delete it. Now to make a duplicate, just press Command J. I'm using a Mac. And I'm sure it's probably like Control J on Windows. So the next thing that I'm going to do while selected, selecting my duplicate layer is go to filter and then liquify. Now the liquify tool is pretty awesome for a lot of reasons. You can do a lot of stuff with this. Uh, the thing people do with this most of the time is, you know, make people skinnier, fix, you know, the arms or the legs or if something's out of place with the hair, they usually do that. So the first thing that I would use is the forward warp tool. Now if I'm trying to make hair bigger, trying to make, you know, if there's like a, if she folded her arm weird, then I can fix it with this warp tool, forward warp tool. Now this is the easiest thing to use. Now, if I'll show you guys how I'm using this. If I was to just use this normally, this is how it would go. I would like push forward and what I would recommend is using a bigger brush for this. So just dragging upwards, if you wanted to make the hair bigger you could, you want to move this slightly up. Now as you can see, as I'm doing that, it's pulling her face sometimes, as you can see. If I wanted to do that, that's not going to work. The thing that you could do to prevent this is using the freeze mask tool, which is located here. The thi now what the freeze mask tool does is it actually creates, um, it's like a shield. So you can add it to the face or any other area that you do not want to be affected by the, the warp tool or any other tool that you're using. So what you do is kind of just brush over any areas you do not want affected. So what I would use on is the face mostly. If I'm making the hair bigger, I'll go under the neck, the hands that I don't want to be affected. So that if I'm, I'm pulling upwards, it's not going to touch any of these areas. So I will show you... Now, what's going to happen if I use the warp tool again? I'm going to do 150. Now, watch what happens when I try to do it. It only pulls to the area that I did not have the freeze mask on. So, I can go like this, and the face is still going to be okay. Now, let's say you wanted to take away something on the freeze mask tool. All you have to do is go to the thaw tool and then just kind of erase it. So I'm just going to go ahead and just for the sake of this tutorial. A lot of people use the warp tool as a way to make someone make someone's arm skinnier or someone's uh, features skinnier. I would normally not touch anything here but for the sake of this tutorial I'll show you guys. You just kind of slowly pull in. You don't want to do something like this. You don't want to do that. You want to go in very slowly you want to make sure about any lines, They're, they have to stay straight just so that it's not too obvious because you don't want to be, it to be too obvious. Just pulling in very soft. Again, really, she doesn't, she really does not need to be skinnier than this, but um, I'm showing you guys how to do that. And if I wanted the hair even bigger than this. She's gonna look like she has like an afro. Damn. You know like when people like when they touch their hair gets all big because they touch they like get electrocuted. That's how it's gonna look. <laughs> okay. Well it's looking uh, a bit excessive here but at least you guys are learning. <laughs> okay. So I'm just gonna get rid of this freeze mask tool. And honestly, to be completely honest with you guys, the only tools that I really use here are the warp tool, freeze tool, thaw tool. Sometimes I will use the bloat tool. Um, I'll show you guys exactly how to do that. Now, let's say you don't want all this, like you're like, damn, that looks really ugly. All you have to do is just go to the reconstruct tool and it'll go back to its original state. Cry no more. 
So it basically just reverts back to whatever you just did. So you don't have to cancel and then redo it. And now I'm going to show you guys the other features, the twirl clockwise. So I don't even know, how can you use this? Like, I mean, if you really want to, you can do that, but I rarely use this tool. I think if you're using um, a brush or something, then you can use this, but for a photograph, really wouldn't recommend that. And then there's the pucker tool, which is, it's not bad, I guess, in some ways, but I really hardly use this. If you want to make something smaller, um, if you're trying to make a nose smaller, you can use this, just kind of tapping, tapping, just soft tapping. And as you can see, I wish I could show it before and after. Um, but as you can see, just slightly made her nose a little bit smaller. So if you did want to make um, features smaller, you just click once and it kind of makes it smaller. And then um, there's the bloat tool. So let's say you wanted to make someone's lips bigger or um, you wanted to emphasize some kind of feature. But I would really be careful using this because it can cause uh, warping and blurriness which is what you don't want because then it's really gonna look fake so this just kinda makes it if you wanted to make some, bloat something if you want to make it bigger again don't really use this tool too much and then there's the push left tool I really don't use this at all I think it's really weird it kinda just pushes everything to the left Again, I don't use this for my photography. Um, we then have the mirror tool. It's something that I, again, do not use, but if you can find some way to make this look cool, um, if you're doing digital design, this might be cool. But for a photographer, I don't see much use in this other than maybe make an abstract artwork, I guess. That's kind of cool. I can like just warp everything and put it in my room and say some famous artist did it, but it's really just me. And then there's the turbulence tool. I, I, don't, I wouldn't even touch this, honestly. This is like if you're really pissed off at someone and you're just like, yeah. Um, if you do, you could use this, honestly, if you're tackling uh, hair, if you want hair to be a little bit more messier. Um, if you want to slightly move something, but you can also just use the warp tool. So again, I wouldn't really use this too much. I already showed you guys the freeze mask tool, the thaw tool, and the zoom and the hand are just kind of there to move things around. So very quickly, I'm going to manipulate this a tiny bit. Again, if I was using the free freeze mask tool, then this would not be an issue because her face is moving everywhere. Like, yeah. And using the warp tool, I can just bring down her shoulder a little as well. Not that she needs it, but... Again, just slightly pushing. And that's really all I'm doing. I'm not dragging. I'm dragging slowly and then I'm lifting my uh, pen up so that I can, I don't drag and then it just moves it all like that. But, I mean, there's, let me show you guys the before and after. So this is before and this is after. Again, I just got cheerily does not need to be that skinny and it's not even proportional. But you guys get the gist of it. Um, I use the warp tool. I use a little bit of the pucker over here, a uh, warp tool here. I would not retouch this normally like this, by the way, you guys. I would never have an arm this tiny because, um, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm showing you guys exactly how to do that. Hopefully this has helped you. And thank you guys so much for watching.